I am going to make three network attached storages at three budget classes to serve three kinds of use cases. Now I am not a storyteller, but here is somebody who is actually good at storytelling, laying out the problem statement of what I am going through, elegantly and with vivid details. But the thing is, if I want one of these files, it's probably on a couple of drives, but more than likely it's on like four of the drives, and then you got to play a little game of I Spy to spot the difference and figure out which one of these drives has the most updated version of the project. And then sometimes you'll keep searching around and then you'll find out, you know what? It's not on any of the drives, it's just gone. So it's not so much of a system here. The way I would describe it is really chaos reigns. I feel personally attacked, but at the same time, a little relieved that I'm not the only one with this problem. And if you have the same problem, then one of those solutions might be just right for you. Our first build costs only $30 and it's made out of a Raspberry Pi 0W or 02W. And that's it, we're not even gonna spend extra on storage. The microSD card that runs the Pi will itself be configured to host the storage directory and served over the network. Once we have configured and flashed the card with Raspberry Pi OS Lite, we can boot up the Pi. We need to find its IP address on the network to log into it. Once we are in and the system is upgraded, we'll install Samba to configure the NAS. If you follow this tutorial, then you will be fine on most Debian based distros like Ubuntu, Mint, Pop or PyOS as it is in our case. So next up, we need to update the Samba configuration file to add a new share. We are just gonna call it share for simplicity. We can share any directory, but to keep the users and permissions simple, we're going with a folder named share inside the user's home directory. We need to be able to write, so set read only to no, and also browsable to yes for various reasons that are too complicated to explain in this video. Save the file and create the directory that we set in the share path if it doesn't exist yet. Also, we need to add pi as the Samba user just type smbpasswd-a pi and then when prompted enter samba password. All we need to do now is to restart the samba service so that the changes that we made come into effect. And we can verify that by opening a file browser and visiting the share path. It might even be already discovered on the network depending on your settings. Put in the username and password when prompted and you should be in. It looks blank in here because we didn't create any content, so let's put something in there first. And now we can access the NAS from a Windows system in a similar way. Just the path formatting for network shares is a little different on Windows. Pi zeros don't have the fastest wireless speed, so the write speed will be limited to 2 to 3 Mbps and the read speed will be 4 to 5 Mbps. This is a barebone NAS and it's not made to break any benchmarks. It's a very low cost full manual control option as a portable NAS that you can even power with a battery pack. And hey, a slow NAS is better than no NAS, am I right? It not only gives you access to mission critical or sensitive files at a pinch, it also allows you to transfer and share files with strangers without needing to plug in untrusted USB devices to your system as sort of an air gap if you want. But what if you're getting more serious about your data management and want a more practical solution? and you are still not sure how much to spend on it before getting accustomed to using a NAS. Then our next $150 build is going to be the one that you should try out. These are the parts you'd need to get started, but there's a lot of flexibility in here. You can have a wide selection of storage interfaces from NVMe hats to SATA adapters. And on that note, for the storage itself, you can use from a USB pen drive to a full-sized spinning hard disk if you want to. But we are going for flash storages only and this NVMe to USB adapter with M.2 SSD is the most simple and plug and play way to show it to work. So let's go with that. Prepare a microSD card just like before with PyOS Lite and pop it in. You can run the setup by logging in remotely over Wi-Fi, but it's not recommended. As at the last step, the script we're using will remove network manager and disable Wi-Fi and you will lose shell access. It's a part of its optimization process and you can choose to skip it to keep Wi-Fi but in general you are better off connecting the Pi over Ethernet, adding the storage from the get-go and then power it on. Once you have upgraded the packages, look up for OpenMedia Vault install script. 
and the first link you will get should be a GitHub repo. Check out its readme and copy the installation script. Back in the terminal, just let it run as a super user and grab a cup of coffee. The script will do all the heavy lifting and set up Open Media Vault on the Pi. Now, if you are not into running random script on your systems, I don't blame you, neither am I. So after checking the script the best I could, I also got it reviewed by someone more meticulous and detail oriented than me to be extra sure of what's happening under the hood. Once the script returns you back to your shell, it will not look like much. But if you open your browser and visit the Pi's IP address on the network, you should be greeted with Open Media Vault's login screen. The default username is admin and the default password is Open Media Vault, all lowercase, no space. Once you are in, you will see practically a blank slate of a page asking you to set up the dashboard. This should either make you super happy or super annoyed. If you are super annoyed about the solution not making the choices for you, then now you know. You should probably skip this build and go for a consumer NAS that spends a great deal focusing on the user experience. But if that makes you happy, then please subscribe and turn the dark mode on. Here's the dashboard after setting up some useful widgets and we can see it's running Open Media Vault 7. OMV 7 is still in beta as of now, but it's compatible with Debian Bookworm, which is what the latest Pi OS I'm using. We now need to go to the storage tab and look at the SSD we attached for storage. I'm going to start by wiping the drive, which will delete all the data. So skip this step if you don't want that. Next in the file systems tab, we will create a new file system. I'm choosing ext4 here. If you don't have any particular need for some other file systems, choose ext4. Once it's formatted, it will take us to mount the drive. If you're working with a drive with existing data, then you should only need to mount it. Now we have to create a share on the file system that we just mounted. Again, I'm naming it shared for simplicity. You can name it anything. Choose the file system we just created and set the path to slash. If you mention a path name here, then a folder will be created inside the file system and only that folder will be shared. Also, I'm choosing read write by everyone for simplicity, but it's possible to set more granular permission if you need to. Apply the configurations and from access control list settings, allow all users to have read, write and execute permissions. Now move on to services tab as we need to set up Samba to export the shared file system. First, enable the service and then go to shares tab. Create a new share, select the share that we just created and set the access to guests only and save it. Once you apply the changes, we are all set. Open up the file browser and visit the Samba URL. Because we set this one up very permissively, we should be able to have even anonymous access. We can create files and directories in it just like before and anyone on the network should be able to as well. It's pretty much same on Windows as well and the read and write speed is almost double that of the first build. Now if you haven't noticed yet, I have been using a very similar setup for over a year now with my Pi 4 with measly 2GB RAM. It runs Open Media Vault 6 and it gives all those retired spinning hard disks a second life to keep seizing the day until eventually they give up for good. And even though our operation is small, but there's a lot of potential for aggressive expansion. This is the build I would recommend going for as the first NAS, which will give you the insight you need for when you eventually decide to upgrade to a more robust and convenient solution. Which brings me to my next and final build for today. The $750 NAS with NVMe array using Assistor's AS5402T. Even until recently, NVMe based storage arrays used to be exclusively enterprise focused with cost to match. If you wanted one for yourself, the best bet would have been to get a hand-me-down one from a previous owner or use an NVMe array to PCIe card on a bifurcation supported system or get an NVMe switch for PCIe or something along that line. It's only recently that NVMe arrays have started becoming a part of consumer NAS solutions. While others are just starting to test the waters with one or two M.2 slots, Assistor straight up blows the competition out of the water with double that. 
There's another reason to go with Assister and that's their very open and pro-consumer approach. While all the other solutions try to lock you in, Assister not only don't lock you in and allow easy upgrades, but even go out of their way to make tutorials about how you can disable their own OS called ADM and install and run practically any operating system or NAS distro on their hardware. It's quite refreshing and I highly respect that. And no, this video is not sponsored by Assister. I bought it off of my own money. This channel is not big enough for brand sponsorships. Anyway, I got this crucial P3 NVMe SSDs when the price was low. I mean, it still kinda is. Once the SSD modules are installed, I connected the Ethernet and power cables, then turn it on. I also attached an HDMI cable to capture its output for navigating the BIOS and other diagnostic information, but that's not strictly necessary. What is necessary is the Assister Control Center app, without which the NAS absolutely refuses to get on the network for the first time. So I used an old burner laptop to set it up, and it magically got on the network. I then opened its IP address at port 8000 on a browser to initialize the NAS. It asked me to update the ADM as the first thing and I said yes. Once the update was done and the NAS rebooted, the setup resumed. There's nothing too complicated here, just set up the account, the date time settings and the network settings. I went for manual network setup but you can just leave it at automatic and it will be just fine. And then comes the interesting part where we set up the storage volume. I went for JBoard because I want to use BTRFS for snapshots and BTRFS doesn't handle parity rates like RAID 5, 6 very well. If you want to use parity rates then use EXT4. As I'm using SSDs instead of spinning magnetic hard disks and I mean to have other means of redundancies, I'm not terribly worried about the JBoard setup. It will take a minute to get initialized and once done, you'll be presented with a registration page. I don't mean to expose the NAS over internet, which is what the registration is actually good for, so I'm gonna skip. There will be some statutory pop-ups and first run tutorial levels to play through. With that, you'll finally land on the dashboard and the world is your oyster. There's a lot to explore and discover that I'm going to skip over in this video. A couple of shared directories have already been created by default and you can transfer files over the NAS pretty easily. The fuck? After digging a little bit, I found that it's quite a long-standing issue with GVFS. Apparently while listing Samba shared file systems, it needs legacy Samba support. So I just enabled legacy Samba support from ADM services and even though it's not a solution, more of a hotfix, it got us past the issue. Now, on Linux, there are many other ways to access remote files. So if you don't like this approach, you can go with any of those options. Here you see me getting 30 megabytes per second speed over Wi-Fi, but if connected over Ethernet, it should be much faster. All in all, the setup is quite simple. I'm not entirely sold on the idea of using ADM though, but I've decided to give it a fair try and see how it goes. If it doesn't work out for me, then I always can install TrueNAS or OpenMedia Vault, we'll see. And while at it, I might as well upgrade the memory, add more storages to the drive base, and I'll definitely connect my hard disk dock through USB so that I can use the Pi 4 in some other projects in future. I have several other videos that I'm working on in different stages of development and they're starting to add up. I needed the NAS upgrade so they don't end up in a mess. Subscribe to watch out for those videos and let me know your thoughts in the comments. I read and respond to them all and they absolutely make my day. Thanks for watching and break it till you make it.